Welcome to episode three. And today the lectionary is focused on the Pentecost, which is the point in time where the church recognizes that the disciples received the guidance of the Holy Spirit, which made them brave enough actually to leave the safety of the upper room and go out and preach to the crowds, even though that was a dangerous thing to do. But before we dive into it, let's get a few basic understandings of some of the terms that this passage is going to use because we we might not actually associate with the biblical definition versus what we would use. And so the first word is apocalyptic, and apocalyptic means a revelation. It's a revelation of a new truth that you haven't understood, and it often comes from visions or dreams. And speaking of dreams, in the Bible, dreams are often a way that God communicates, that God sends messages. You'll find that again and again in the Bible. And then visions. Visions are revelations that use either eyesight, physical eyesight, or the mind sight. And again, it's an uncovering of truth of a way of life that you didn't understand before. And prophesy. We might not understand the term prophesy, but instead of predicting the future, prophesy means that you're going to speak on behalf of an individual or of a group. And so who you choose to prophesy for your group is critically important. And then repent. And the use of repent means to drastically alter the way of you're currently living to a way of life that God would have you live. So let's get to the reading. It comes to us from the book of Acts, once again, chapter 2. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and give ear to my words. For these people are not drunk, as you suppose, since it's only the third hour of the day, but this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in those last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Kind of curious that Peter, first presentation to crowds, would invoke an old prophet. The prophet Joel wrote right in the time period where Israel was returning from their forced exile into Babylon. And so it was a time of great change and great crisis for the people. And Joel, in his writings, evoked a way that we might change and how we might adapt to the change and respond to the crisis. Why would Peter choose to use this passage to introduce Jesus as a way of life? You know, Pentecost, which is the gift that enabled them to leave the up safety of the upper room, also made this into a time of crisis and great change for the disciples. Now perhaps Peter was using Joel to introduce that this too was a time of great change and crisis that was upon him, and it was going to be necessary for them to rethink how they live and who they listen to. And perhaps it was to emphasize that old men famous for being set in their ways must now purposely be open to God's new message, as in your old men shall dream dreams. The older generation 2,000 years ago was very reluctant to giving up their place as the head of the community. And what was true 2,000 years ago is still true this day. The older generation is a people that are very stubborn. If you read the Gospels, then you know that Jesus was a radical and revolutionary in his messages. He was radical in his messages because they went against the norm of society, and he was revolutionary, not in terms of overthrowing government, but revolutionary in calling us to dramatically change the way we live. You know, in midlife, when I was seeking out answers for how I should live the rest of my life, I purposely went on immersion experiences to hear voices that I don't normally get a chance to hear, or I never devoted the energy to listening to them. And so I went to local communities of color to listen to their voices. But I also traveled 
to distant communities to hear different voices. Voices of people from a far off land, voices that were speaking across the economic spectrum, voices of the oppressed and voices that we would consider to be disadvantaged or powerless. I listened to the youth and I listened to women leaders from across the spectrum. And the messages were often uncomfortable to listen to, but the wisdom they passed on to me, well, it was priceless. Peter, in announcing the stunningly different understanding of God and how God would have us live, has this amazing and kernel of deep and ancient truth inserted in his opening words. And what's that kernel of truth? That God's Spirit is available to us all if we're open to dreams and visions. You know, you don't have to read the newspapers or watch the media to know that we are in a time of crisis and great change right now. We don't seem to be advancing forward towards the way that God would have us live. In fact, if anything, we're going backwards. And so, like Peter, the prophet Joel may be speaking to us right now that we have to listen to voices that we don't normally credit with being sources of wisdom. We have to listen to communities of color. We have to listen to our youth. We have to listen to women from every walk of life and ask them for their wisdom. And once we truly listen to them, as uncomfortable as that might be, then we need to ask the question, who shall speak on our behalf now? Because that is the greatest gift that we can give our future society, that we're willing to allow others, others who have a wisdom that we don't yet understand, to speak on our behalf and on behalf of future generations. Jesus said it this way in the Gospel of Matthew, but blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. Truly, I tell you, many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see, but did not see it, and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. So this Pentecost, can we be open to God's Spirit guiding us to a new way of life? Can we be open to the voices that God sends to us that speak of a wisdom and a truth we do not yet understand? And can we suppress our own egos, particularly if you're old and white and male like me, and allow the wisdom of others to speak on our behalf? Can we do this now? Something to ponder about for the next week. And I'll see you again the following week when we'll talk about what is the lectionary calling us to do, the wisdom of ancient literature providing guidance for our modern way of life. Take care.